Hello, this is Mike with Trey Wins RV Center. Here to congratulate you on your 2024 Flagstaff Shamrock 233S travel trailer. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite and a couple things to think about when you're parking. On your campsite, leave plenty of room for this awning. On your off campsite, beside your slide, I want you to think about this rear bed, leaving room for a front bed, where your power is above your tire, and where your water is, back here in this rear corner. As well as another bed coming down here. So just take into consideration everything as you're parking. Once you park and you got a good spot, first thing we're gonna do is unhook your hitch and level your unit. And it comes with a power tongue jack. Night docking light should you arrive at night. Simply raise or lower this until you're level. Once you are level, next thing we do is bring down our stabilizing jacks. Now should you lose power, you have this small hand crank here that will get down in this hole here onto a bolt that will get this up and down manually. Speaking of manually, got a manual hand jack right here, three quarter inch hand crank. Put that on your stabilizer jack and start running them down as I do. I'm gonna recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks, from dirt and debris. Uh, a lot of campsites are blacktop. You're gonna keep them from sinking into the blacktop. Grab a four pack of those out of our store with 10% off coupon. Run these down just until they're taunt. Now remember, our unit's already level. All we're trying to do is stabilize it now. Once you've got that down where it starts to have some type of resistance on your hand crank and it feels like you're gonna lift the unit, stop. Get all four of them down and we'll hook up our power and water. 30 amp cord plugs in here on the side. It goes in at like 10 o'clock, then turn it to noon, and put that black washer on. At the end of that 30 amp service, should you need to, plug into a 110, and your convenience pack will be a 30 to 15 amp reducer. Get your power hooked up, let's hook up your water. At this point, none of your beds would normally be down. Leave a couple down for time savers. Here's our docking station. At campsites, we're gonna hook up to city water connection. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting lines in your unit. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites, so always use these. Hook that up, hook up your hose. Don't turn your hose on yet. Find your hot water heater. Yours must be located over here on the campsite. Here it is, campsite front. And all we're doing at this point, folks, make sure your drain plug's back in there. Get a little plumber's tape around it. Not putty, putty will gum up on you. Some plumber's tape, get that in there nice and snug, and then you can go ahead and turn that hose on. After that hose been on for a few minutes, go inside, um, open up your slide if you need to, but I need you to get in there and open up all of your water lines. Get a nice steady flow of water going through them, get all the air out of the lines sink showers and shut them off and you're all set to camp now let's say we're not going to go camping at a uh, campsite yeah we are going to go dry camping in that case we're going to fill up our freshwater tank which is over here on the off campsite next to your power no need for a water pressure regulator here Simply gravity fill this with a hose. Two ways to tell it's full. One is an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks. There's also a freshwater button. Once that's full, put that cap back on there and then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to the city water. That's already pressurized. All right, we're all set to camp with power water. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit. Starting here on our off camp side front. Stabilizing jacks, let's talk slides. On your slide, you've got a rubber seal here. You want that to stay flexible and pliable over the years. They've got a spray that you can put on these. That, that's really gonna add to the life of your trailer, keeping those nice and flexible. 
Nice big story through here. Freshwater drain, which would be more accessible when our slide's closed. Right up underneath there, that white. Again, our fresh water and our power. I'll bring out our other beds here in a moment. Show you how to do that. Under here, we've got a hot and cold shower. There's a spray port hose on the other side that'll use on that. Here's your uh, black and gray tanks. Spare tire has a cover. Water access to your air pump and filter. Our docking station. City water. Tank flush. We'll talk about that when leaving the campsite and closing our black tanks. Antifreeze. That's where you winterize that. Cable and satellite. Got a big awning over here. Your griddle indoors has legs. We'll snap on here. Uh, with your quick connect LP there. There's also a little table that'll sit next to that. Main low point drains are here. Snap a TV on out here. Here's your cable and 110 for running that. A couple of outdoor speakers. A uh, hood. Uh, uh, exhaust for your hood vent. Over here you've got your exhaust for your flue for your furnace. A few things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. And two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear of that. It does get hot. Actually sell bug guards put over those as well. Good investment. There's a spray port hose. The paperwork in there. Hot water heater again. Uh, if your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working, come out here to see if either one of these bubbles are bubbled up. If you are, simply press them back in. They are a reset. Up front, your propane does have a cover. There's a regulator on it. Lefty Lucy to open, point it toward the tank you wish to be using. That turns red, draw the gas. Green now. Then switch over. Uh, one more docking light up front here. And lastly, your battery disconnect. This will disconnect all the battery power to the unit. That will come important here shortly when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. That covers everything out here. Let's go ahead and show you how to bring one of these beds down. So make sure you keep these locked for travel. Unsnap one on each side. That will lift up and simply just bring it down. I do it one handed all the time. Nothing to fold out. There's a polypropylene that will uh, mold and mildew resistant. And you'll come up in here. I've actually started to move the mattress out of the way just to simplify this. But you've got what they call is a, a shepherd's hook. Curved on one end, straight on the other. Have that curve up. We're going down in between this black area here. So again, another angle. Putting that right in there. Push that out again down here. Have our curved end up. Just lock it in anyway up here. The tighter the better. And fold your mattress down. We're all set. So that's how all those fold down. Alright, so going over a lot of the inside of your unit. First thing I want to start with. Is your fire extinguisher make sure that you and everyone is camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency to my left up top is going to be my control panel there's where i can see the level of my fresh water when filling that your black and gray tanks your battery level awning lights um step light mix it down there and interior lighting Here's where you can connect to Bluetooth so that you can monitor everything from your phone. Here's where you turn on your water heater hooked to gas. Your water heater hooked to electric. It does make a difference. Choose correctly. Here's where you turn on your water pump to get to that fresh water. Tank heater. That's a little 12-volt pad on your tanks. Turn that on here. That'll keep your tanks from freezing in inclement weather. Uh, down here's your slide control and our awning control on your awning. 
You only want to run that awning out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees. You can see that brown bar. If you hold that extend down, that will conti continue running out, flip up onto itself, and start running itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. As it continues to come in, I mentioned right here, here is also a 110 with GFCI reset. And as that comes in, I shut off my awning light. I mentioned these slam locks work best when gently slammed. Coming up into the kitchen, we've got microwave, self-explanatory there, light and fan, above your cooktop here. This glass top here makes an excellent backsplash. Coming down here, turn on your panel light. Turn this to high, hit your spark, and there's your flame. So same thing on all three of these and your oven. Now on your oven, turn this to the flame, hit your spark, that'll light your pilot light. With this light off, you'll usually be able to see the reflection of the pilot light. If not, look up underneath there and see if it lit. That panel light rocked down into an oven light. One touch light in here, your sink. Um, maintain your plumbing. Keep an eye on your plumbing over the years. There's your return for your heat duct, which should bring me to a thermostat down here in the hallway. Before that, I'm so this is your solar controller. I'll send you a separate video from Go Power. You just need to keep that on flooded battery. That's your only concern with that. This is just to keep your solar panels from overcharging your batteries. Down here, crank the heat up. All right, you hear that running? I'm gonna shut that heat off, and it's actually gonna take a few minutes before that fan will shut off. Where when I do the AC, you hear that. So these also have a quick dump too. They'll blast the air down cold, and then when you close it, it goes through the vent system. But what I'm gonna show you is when I shut the AC off, that shuts off immediately. It will take a few minutes for that fan to cycle through before it shuts off. Down here in the hallway is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mentioned that's 12 volt, that's always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, you're going to be gone for the day, you don't want this to run your battery down, use your battery disconnect up front. Your rear bed, your side bed, uh, your are prep for TV, you can put here on this back your wall here, cable and 110 there. There's your griddle for outdoors. Your fridge here, I do want to tell you to be careful with these because this new kind can open up from either side. Just make sure that when you close it, you close it all the way. Otherwise, your hinge will come off and this will fall off. We don't want that to happen. Uh, down below here is going to be your breaker box and fuses. You got a ton of 15s and a couple of 40s. I highly recommend having some of those with you when you go camping. It's in our bathroom real quick. Couple of flushes of your toilet when you first arrive. Put some water down into your black tank. Your black tank will thank you later. Lighting here. Uh, we've got a hand touch, hand crank open exhaust vent in here as well. A little plumbing to maintain. There's your access panel, square headed screws for that. And then this is a shower door that you want to keep snapped closed for travel. Oh, uh, your TV here, the Kinex. Turn that on here. The heat return just shut off. As to show you how quick, how long those take. Uh, smart TV from Kinex. Nice. AM, FM, Bluetooth, everything will run through here. There is a manual in your bag. It should be in a drawer around here. Make sure we find that. Oh, you got a couple of, so you got three fans, and these are for your heated mattress. 
Each one of those fans will snap on here and plug in on the end. I will find that paperwork for you. Um, here's your inverter. That will invert your power. If you are out dry camping and just need a burst of power, just read up on the inverters before you use it. Smoke alarm here in the ceiling. This is your backup camera. This will also jackknife down to a bed. Actually, I think it rolls from the front. Let me show you how that works here. Yeah, this kind of rolls over. Just flip that down. Make sure that you have this down before bringing your whole bed down. We've got another sleeping quarters there. Again, make sure you bring that up before closing here. You have your hand crank open, exhaust vent here. Five, four different speeds. About covers everything in here. So I think we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. I'm gonna flip this bed back up. Make sure I have that in some closed position. So the first thing I like to do is shut off my interior lights. Now I see any other lights that are in here have to be shut off by hand. Now I can come back to my control panel and turn on my interior lights. With my lights back on, I'm gonna start bringing some beds in. Flip that up, push forward on that. I like to keep these bars in this corner of the fold of the mattress. Now from outside, I'll go push that up. Same thing down here, push that in. Put this into the fold of the mattress. Slide in. Make sure our TV is back in its reclined position. Or all the way back. You can pull that out and adjust it. I want you to hear that noise. That's the slide mechanism telling you that it's in all the way. Now we'll go ahead and get that mattress up off the Velcro here and bring them in a little bit. That's going to allow you to lift up your outdoors a little easier. All right, shut off our interior lights and exit the unit. Biggest thing on these steps, you want to make sure this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this will catch on it when it comes up. Your feet are adjustable. If you press in on that, move the leg to where you want. This lock will help keep that from slamming into your door going down the road. Before you leave the dump station, lock and deadbolt. Lift and turn this handle. That's how you want that handle for travel. All right, if we are out dry camping, We're going to come around, get up underneath our freshwater side here, and dump our freshwater drain. Bring up our stabilizing jacks, and head on home or the nearest dump station, whatever we're in need of. Show you quickly how to bring these up. I can do it as one person. It's nice with a two-person job, because then each person can tuck in the fabric on each side. on each side, tucking it in, make sure that your top, make sure you lift this all the way up before closing this, oops, once you've got it under there, then you can close that down onto it, make sure you lock these for travel, repeat the process back here, 
All right, if we're at a campsite, we'll unhook our power, our water, our cable, bring up our stabilizing jacks, and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump's going to be on your off-camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle in between your tires and the rear of the unit. 10-foot hose comes your convenience pack. Hook that up. The first one we're going to pull is the one on the right. That is going to be your black handle. That's going to be your sewer outlet. When it sounds like that's no longer draining, go inside, check the level, level of your black tank. If it shows empty or close to it, come back out here. Leave that black handle open, grab the hose at the dump station, and hook it up to this tank flush. Turn that on, let that run for a good five minutes. It's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, close that up. Close your black handle, make sure all that drains come out of there. Close your black handle and pull your gray handle. Now while my grays are draining, I like to come over here, dump my low point drains. The low point drains are done. Uh, if we're done camping for a while, don't want to leave water in your stagnant water in your hot water heater. Come up here, lift up on this pressure release valve. That's gonna dump hot water, so be careful. When that's done, put that handle back down, and then you can pull your drain plug for your residual hot water. When your gray is done, you're gonna close that gray handle, grab that sewage hose, and conveniently and sanitarily store it right here in your bumper and head on home. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this shamrock for many years to come. Happy camping.